Hello students. Uh, today we will be discussing about uh, offer and acceptance. Essentials of a valid offer and acceptance. So first uh, let us uh, have a clear idea about uh, offer. An offer is a proposal made by one party to the other party in order to establish a legal agreement between them. Again, I repeat, an offer is a proposal made by one party to the other party in order to establish a legal agreement between them. So, we have section 2A. The person is said to make a proposal when he signifies to another his willingness to do or to abstain from doing anything with a view of obtaining the assent of other for its realization. So what the section 2a tells? A proposal when he signifies to another his willingness to do. Yes, I want to do it or I want to abstain from doing it. And he obtains the assent of other for its realization. So this is regarding the definition of a offer. Let us have an example. It will be very, very, very clear for you. If P asks Q, there are two persons, P and Q. P asks Q to sell his house for 10 lakhs. Here what happens? A proposal exists. Two persons are there. P is asking Q to sell his house for an amount of rupees 10 lakhs. One is making the proposal in order to gain the acceptance of the other person. The person who makes the proposal or offer is referred as promiser. We can uh, call uh, in another way as uh, offerer or proposer. Okay, the person who makes the proposal or offer referred to as pro promiser, offerer or proposer and the person to whom the offer is made is referred as offeree and if the person accepts the offer, then he is known as promisee or acceptor. Is it clear? Now, now let us go to the procedure to make an offer. So, there is a set of procedure is there. For example, an offer can be made in the Two ways. See, we call it as expressed offer or implied offer. Expressed offer or implied offer. It is very clear. Expressed offer means what? Offer is made by expressing words. Spoken or written. So, it is called expressed offer. Q tells P that he offers to sell his house for 10 lakhs. Then it is called 
expressed offer next we have implied offer if the offer is assumed from the behavior of a person or from the prevailing circumstances then it is referred to as implied offer we will be traveling in public transport buses are in trains and uh, the trains will be traveling in various routes throughout india the railway department makes an implied offer to carry the passengers to their destination at a particular fare as soon as the passenger gets into the train the offer gets uh, completed okay so that is called so it is implied we have purchased the ticket we have uh, boarded the train so the offer as soon as we enter into the train the offer gets uh, completed and uh, what are the constitutes of an offer uh, all the offers made by an offerer are not considered as legal offer the tests which help them in ascertaining whether the offer is actually made or not so this is very very important all the offers made by an offerer are not considered as legal offer the offerer should indicate the offeree his desire to do or to refrain from doing something the offerer should indicate the offeree his desire to do or to refrain from doing something the offerer should make an offer so as to gain the acceptance of the offeree to the act desired the offer should be clear and specific the offer needs to be discussed with the offeree so these four points play a very very important role and uh, what we call uh, Uh, these are the tests which help them which help us uh, to ascertain whether the offer is actually made or not okay is it clear essentials are essential elements of a valid offer let us discuss about it uh, in a brief way and uh, here uh, uh, we will be having uh, around 9 uh, points in detail i will be explaining each and every point uh, regarding the elements of a valid offer so first point uh, offer should be as per law offer should be as per law and should have the capability of being accepted and establishing a legal relationship offer should be as per law and should have the capability of being accepted and establishing a legal relationship so according to law an offer which does not lead to the establishment of a legal relationship is not a valid offer the offers of a social and domestic nature do not constitute legal relationship legal relationships are generally established in business transactions in these transactions if one party is responsible for the breach of contract then the other party can sue 
against the party responsible for breaching so this first point is the basic point and very very important point for the valid offer so please remember offers of a social and domestic nature do not constitute legal relationship legal relationships are generally established in business transactions and we can't break the contract that is very very important so whoever breaks they are responsible for it okay is it clear now let us go to the second point offer should be definite and certain it should not be vague so the second point what it tells should be definite certain and it should not be vague if the terms of an offer are not clear specific and certain then it cannot constitute a valid offer and hence cannot create a contractual relationship an agreement which is to be agreed in future cannot constitute a contract as the terms of agreement are not at a decided because of which it is uncertain to take place an agreement which is to be agreed in future constitute a contract as the terms of agreement are not at decided because of which it is uncertain to take place for example p purchased a cow from q and is promised to buy one more if the first cow gives good quantity of milk later p denied to buy one more cow here q cannot enforce the agreement as it was loose not clear and vague so okay so is it clear so therefore an agreement which is to be agreed in future cannot constitute a contract because it is not a decided it is uncertain to take place coming to the third point here an offer may be differentiated from expressing of intention and an announcement here a person expresses that he has an intention to do something then the second person cannot take an action against the first person expression indicates that an offer will be made or invited in future not at the present condition this should be very very clear just is expressing one person is expressing his intention to do something and second person cannot take action against the first person a college conducts a scholarship test announces that the first five merit students will be given scholarship the student who got sixth place in merit list cannot sue against the college for not giving him scholarship the expression of intention to write an exam does not establish a binding contract on those who have appeared in it the sixth student cannot receive the scholarship so therefore an offer may be differentiated from expressing of intention and an announcement okay again in the same lines we have another an invitation to make an offer or to do business an offer 
should be differentiated from an invitation to receive an offer. The person inviting will not make any offer and instead of it invites the other person to make an offer. For example, domestic invitations. Though constitute an offer, they are not considered as offers as per the law as they do not involve any legal obligation. When a shopkeeper demonstrates something of goods available in his window, then it does not mean that he is making an offer. Instead of this, it means uh, informing and inviting the public to make an offer by buying the goods on a marked price. In a shop, if there is a self-service system, then the customer chooses the products as per his or her preferences and, they, and then carry those products to the cashier to pay the price. The cashier calculates the total amount, accepts it from the customer. In this case, the offer is not made when the customer chooses the products. It is made when the cashier accepts the payment. The choosing of products by the customer constitutes an implied offer. When the cashier accepts the amount, it constitutes the acceptance of the offer. Okay, three points are completed. Let us continue. We have the fourth point. An offer should be communicated. In order to make a complete valid offer, it should be discussed or communicated with the offeree, the person to whom the offer is made. The offer cannot be accepted if it is not communicated by an offerer to an offeree. Anything which is done in ignorance of an offer cannot be accepted as there is no consensus of will. Finally, an offer can be effective only when it is communicated. So, communication plays a very very important role. An offer can be effective only when it is communicated and it becomes a complete offer. Next, a father knowing that his four years kid was not found at home asked his housekeeper to search for the kid. The housekeeper leaves the home to search around. The person declared a reward of thousand rupees for whoever traces and uh, brings his uh, kid back. 1000 for whoever traces and brings his kid back. The housekeeper without having any knowledge regarding the reward traces and brings the kid back and when he came to know about the declaration he claims for it but his claim for reward was dismissed as he has traced the kid before knowing about the reward. So, it should be very, there should be clarity, the communication should be clear. Okay. Uh, next, fifth point is offer should be made with a perspective to receive the acceptance. The offer should be made with an intention of gaining the other party's acceptance and not just for revealing the intention of making an offer. So, here offer should be made with an intention of gaining the other party's acceptance is very very important. Just uh, uh, for revealing the intention is, uh, is not sufficient. Okay. Next, sixth point. Offer should not include the term non-compliance. A person cannot declare that the offer is assumed to be accepted. If the acceptance is not communicated by within a specific time. P writes to Q that 
he shall sell his house for 20 lakhs. Q does not reply. Then he shall consider that the offer is accepted. But a contract cannot be made if you, Q does not reply and he is not oblig, uh, obliged to reply. On the other hand, if Q accepts peace proposal, then an offer is made. So this is very important. So the other person has to give his acceptance. Then only offer will take place. Seventh point, a statement of price is not an offer. A statement of price cannot make an offer to sell. See, for example, P and Q are the two persons. P asks Q, are you ready to buy my house? Q replies, the highest price I can pay is uh, rupees uh, uh, 15 lakhs. P agrees to sell his house for rupees 15 lakhs. Here, a contract can be made only if Q accepts the peace last condition. Q gave only little information and no offer can be made without complete information. So, uh, there should be clarity and uh, mere, uh, uh, what we call uh, declaring the price is not an offer. So, a contract can be made only Q accepts peace condition as Q gave only little information and no offer can be made without uh, complete uh, information. Next, an offer should follow the terms and conditions. This is very very important. Before making an offer, the offerer reveals the terms and conditions associated with the offer. The offeree should accept all the terms and conditions if he wants to make an offer. Hence, a contract cannot exist if all the terms and conditions of an offer are fulfilled and accepted. So, offer should follow all the terms and conditions. If both the parties agree and if they are satisfied, then offer will take takes place. Last point, two identical cross offers cannot make a contract. If two parties make similar offers to each other, then the offers are referred to as cross offers. Cross offers. And uh, such a type of identical cross offers, they cannot make a contract. So, these offers does not form an acceptance of one's offer by the other and uh, there is no mutual agreement so identical or cross offers cannot make a contract let us discuss about acceptance uh, one or two cases and the uh, types of uh, acceptance section 2b of the indian contract act 1872 defines acceptance as a proposal to be accepted when the person to whom the proposal is made signifies his assent thereto. So here a proposal on its acceptance becomes a promise. So a proposal is said to be accepted when the person to whom the proposal is made uh, signifies his assent thereto. So he agrees. There are two persons one is offering and other person is uh, uh, agrees okay agrees or accepts it so here uh, as an example and a offers to sell his house uh, for rupees 15 lakhs b accepts a's offer it means that b has accepted the offer made by a so here an offer made can be accepted by only those persons for whom it is made. So these two persons, they are having the understanding, one is offering and other one is accepting. So therefore an offer made can be accepted by only those persons to whom the, uh, what we call, offer is made. In case of a specific offer, offer is made to a specific group 
or specific people or to a particular person for specific purpose it is called as a specific offer in case of specific offer acceptance to the offer is made only to specific group of people whereas in general offer in case of general offer an offer made to general public that is a world at large or public is called a general offer a general offer is accepted only if the person possesses knowledge about the terms and conditions of the offer a company made an advertisement that it would pay hundred dollars to anyone in the printed form on the condition that any one of the employee suffers with the influenza after the usage of their medicine then what happens it is a general offer so whoever accepts the conditions and if they suffer from the disease definitely they can ask for the reward and this is very very important so similarly offer and acceptance whoever accepted and if they are having such type of disease definitely the company has to pay the money okay or the, the reward types of acceptance here uh, it is expressed acceptance and implied acceptance Ex expressed acceptance refers to acceptance which is expressed by words either spoken or in written form okay a made offer to b saying will you buy my refrigerator for rupees 50000 b says i am ready to buy the refrigerator this is an example of an expressed acceptance implied acceptance an implied acceptance is not made in words either spoken or written it is implied to the person by either depending on a particular situation related to case or implied from the conduct of a person for example an ice cream company provides all variety of flavors ajay a customer visits the company to have an ice cream thus ajay comes under implied acceptance on account of his conduct he has to pay the price of the ice cream so it is implied once you have uh, uh, taken the ice cream it is implied to pay the money to the owner of the company uh, now let us uh, discuss about the requirements of valid acceptance the acceptance is said to be valid if it fulfills uh, some conditions requirements uh, rules or essentials so there are uh, around 7 uh, uh, essentials uh, for uh, uh, the requirement of a valid uh, acceptance so the first one is uh, absolute and unqualified Section seven one of the Indian Contract Act of eighteen seventy two defines as in order to convert a proposal into a promise, the acceptance must be absolute and unqualified. It means an offer should be accepted as it is without any kind of deviation or reservation or condition. a qualified and conditional acceptance gives rise to counter offer thereby terminating the original offer to proceed further say there are two persons x and y x he wants to sell his car for rupees 10 10 lakhs and y 
uh, accepts the offer and uh, uh, informs uh, X that uh, he pays uh, only 9 lakhs. Later on, in, if Y accepts the original offer of X, X will not be bound to sell his car for rupees 10 lakhs. Because original offer of uh, X is being uh, terminated on account uh, of uh, Y's uh, uh, counter offer to the original offer. Uh, second point, manner. Section 7.2 of the Indian Contract Act 1872 specifies uh, that the acceptance should be in the following manner. If the proposal does not clearly indicate the manner in which the offer is to be accepted, then the offer should be accepted in some usual and reasonable manner. If the proposal specifies the manner in which the offer is to be accepted, the offer must be accepted as per the specific manner defined by the Indian Contract Act. A of Mumbai sends a fax to B of Bangalore, asks him to buy his business and also writes send the acceptance through fax. B accepts the offer but sends the acceptance through telegram. Thus, A can reject the offer of B as it was not according to the prescribed manner but A should inform B about this rejection within a reasonable time. If in case A does not do so, then it is considered as acceptance of offer made by B and would become a valid contract between A and B. Next one. Communication. The acceptance to the offer is set to complete if the offer has been communicated between the offeree and the offerer. If the offer is not communicated, then it would not be a valid offer. Next, by whom acceptance should be communicated by the authorized person only, the offeree. Otherwise, there would be no legal relationship. Example, P applied for the post of uh, principal in, in a college. The managing committee, even though selected P, but did not communicate the same to P, a member of the managing committee informed P about his selection and this was not known by the other managing committee members. On the other hand, the managing committee cancelled the resolution and appointed some other, some, somebody else for the post of uh, um, principalship. P filed a suit in court against the college for breach of contract. It was uh, held that P's case was not being processed further as is appointed to the uh, college was not legally informed by an authorized person. So this is very important. So therefore here acceptances should be communicated by the authorized person only that is the offeree otherwise there would be no legal relationship. Next to whom? Acceptance should be communicated to whom the offer is made, that is to the offeree. If the offer is not communicated to an authorized person, then there will be no legal contract. Time limit. The acceptance to the offer should be given in a prescribed or reasonable time. It depends on the facts and conditions of the case. X offers to sell his shares of the company in the month of June, but the acceptance to the offer communicated in November. It was held that offerer was not bound by the acceptance as the acceptance was not given in the specified time. So the time is very very important. So acceptance to the offer should be given in a prescribed or reasonable time. 
before the lapse of an offer the acceptance to the offer should be given before the offer gets lapsed or is taken back if the acceptance of the offer is given after the lapse of an offer then there would be no valid contract x offers y to shift his house from mumbai to pune within 6 months y shifts to pune after a year he received offer it was held that there is no valid contract between x and y due to lapse of offer and therefore the acceptance was uh, considered as invalid so acceptance to the offer should be given before the offer gets uh, lapsed or is taken back this is a uh, very important so we have discussed uh, in detail about uh, what uh, what we call offer and acceptance what are the essentials of a valid offer and what are the essentials of acceptance so with this the lesson is completed thank you